right guys we're uh ooh, yeah. there we go at the funeral home here and uh we've only got about yeah maybe an inch of snow but it's wet and it's uh it's packing up good good place to uh break in my cutting edge here i already plowed the auto parts and i'm waiting for scotty to call me back to let me know if i gotta pick up a couple of his today which uh, ain't no big deal that's the way we roll now if i was under the gun here trying to get these done i'd probably get a little more frustrated but this ain't too bad it's only about 9 30 and uh I only got about another 40 minutes here by the time I salt it and shovel the entryways and all that. So, now one of the places I got to do for him is only about five minutes from my house. So, it'll kind of be on my way home, I suppose. He's got a 87 Chevy, uh, three quarter ton, 350. The thing's just falling apart, but, uh, you know, that, that truck has uh, gotten him out of some jams before. A couple years ago when he uh, popped the motor in his Duramax, again, same truck that I was describing before, uh, and had to drop a motor in it. He only had a truck for like three months and had to put a motor in it. And the uh, used dealer that he bought it from would not cover it. So that was a all said and done, I think about a $12,000 fuck you. That, uh, that old Chevy got him through and we had a rough winter. So, I can talk shit about that truck, I guess, all I want, but in reality, it's uh, it's gotten him by. It was an all around bad winter. I remember uh, me and the guy that used to work for me, he was a pretty decent wrench. Uh, the three of us uh, had to put a transfer case in that old Chevy truck. That, and that was his main plow truck for the longest time until he uh, bought that new GMC that burnt to the ground. If it wasn't for bad luck, this buddy of mine wouldn't have any luck. So, I don't know if he's getting a plow on that truck now or uh, what he's working on. He said he might throw it on that truck and give it a shot. But this cutting edge is working out good. Oh, that might be him there. All right, I'm gonna cut you loose for a minute. All right, that was Scotty. He says, uh, go ahead and hit his couple of daycare places for him. Uh, unfortunately, the one uh, had like intramural basketball this morning starting at 9.30, so that's gonna be about a waste of time to try and get in there, but we'll do something with it. Medina one's got something at noon, the local one. So, I'll be about another half hour here. And I ought to be able to get it squared away. It is still snowing, not bad though. And it's right at probably 30 degrees. So, the salt ought to burn on this pretty quick. Unfortunately, I wasn't expecting this, so I didn't pick up a pallet of salt, so we're going to have to. Kind of rob Peter to pay Paul, as it were. It's pretty slick under this stuff, though. It was raining yesterday. I kind of plowed this place ass backwards. The phone kept ringing, so I just kept pushing what was easy, and I didn't have to worry about looking around too much. I could probably leave these office buildings unplowed for today, but I really don't want to do that because... Oh, that feels like a speed bump. That's got to be a snow pile. Um, if they have a larger set of... Oh, that's nice. I just packed that right to the fucking pavement. Sweet. That's one bad thing about uh, driving over your snow piles when it's wet like this. They turn into speed bumps. A little salt will turn that 
speed bump into mush, but it was stupid that I did that. I, I backed over it more than once and didn't realize it the first time. Oh well. All that rain yesterday washed all that crusty salt off of these parking lots. Otherwise, this stuff uh, probably wouldn't be this deep. I have to get the skid steer up here this week and move that pile. It's starting to really screw up my parking lot. This one and the one in the back corner by the back entrance. It's just getting too tall. It's out or too wide. It's just falling out in the parking lot and I can't stack snow on it anymore. Yeah, I can start carrying snow all over the place here, but I don't want to add a half an hour to my morning routine here every time I push for the next 10 or 15 pushes. <clears throat> when I could spend uh, two hours with the skid steer and eliminate some aggravation, I suppose. on a couple videos last night. Didn't do a whole lot. Didn't feel like doing shit yesterday. I was warming up. I was working on one of my torpedo heaters that keeps uh, shutting off on me. Thought the photo eye was bad in it. And checked it and uh, tested good. But I had a new one on the shelf so I changed it. I think it's out of fuel now. <clears throat> Might have fixed it. I'm not sure. Not, it's one of those hot surface ignition styles, so it's got like a glow bar in it and that thing. I think I replaced it once, so that may be going out again. They don't seem to last forever, so. One thing I am noticing, I'm getting just a little pecker trail off of these wings in between the wing and the plow. Even though it's touching it, there's the wing edge tips back a little bit past the cutting edge, so the snow's like sneaking through that little gap. And I gave my, what was left of my old rubbers from the cutting edge to Scott to put on his, uh, repair the ones that are on his western wings, because they're a lot smaller of a piece of rubber that they utilize. So I don't know if he can use those or not. If he can't, I may uh, bolt them to the front of these to give them a little thickness so that that snow is not sneaking in between the wing and the cutting edge. I'm glad I didn't put two sweatshirts on this morning. I'm roasting in here. I'm gonna open up another window. I'll let you guys listen to some exhaust. Probably end up fucking up the camera sound, but. jumps pretty good there but that drop was only about a half an inch it's kind of a shitty uh, repair on the parking lot they repaired this whole back corner and they really fucked it up when they did it i noticed it this summer and said something about it but they didn't they didn't seem to think it was a problem Yeah, 
bit slick underneath this stuff. I hate piling snow up where it's starting to come out on the parking lot, but I've got ice piles at this point, and ooh, you know, it just won't stack. Especially this wet stuff doesn't stack very good to begin with. story I was uh, lost, losing my train of thought there watch a couple videos I see you, uh, you got your uh, underside of your firebird in uh, edge primer and 2k Jerry that's awesome buddy I'm proud of you man you knocked that out of the park that looks good and since you have to do it in steps that 2k will be easy to scuff up and uh, get your seam sealer on those seams and then uh, hit it with your uh, Raptor liner, bed liner, or whatever kind of uh, urethane bed liner you're going to put on it. That's going to be a, a damn good looking car. Really taking your time. I'm really impressed with the job you're doing, man. For a guy who's never really done anything like that before, by the time you get around to that Ford, uh, damn, that's just going to be nice. There ain't no two ways about it, buddy. So, kudos. Now, oh, what else I want? My buddy Gary Turbo Cobra building himself a, a table. An interesting project if you haven't uh, seen the video yet. He's building a table out of a couple uh, tandem axle trailer fenders that he's fashioned together uh, to make the outside of the table. And then he's going to lay some uh, real nice, looks like uh, one by two type uh, hardwood on top of it. I'm not sure what the table's for, if it's going to be like a work table. I, I didn't catch that part. Maybe I wasn't paying good enough attention, but um, that's going to be pretty cool, man. So got to see those vids, and uh, uh, Darren's working on that 1600. Getting that on the go. Uh, watch HPR's video. Uh, man, I really like your story on... Uh, how you got into doing body work and all that that's pretty cool you know it's funny everybody has their own story of how they did it and uh, I think a lot of us I'll call myself a backyard guy uh, I'm not a professional guy I might do things somewhat professionally or do them close to the right way with the equipment I have on hand but uh, I really uh, I really enjoyed those stories the way I got into body work is uh, I, I guess I, I took a class in high school it was like an auto maintenance type class and the teacher was really into restoring cars and doing stuff like that so uh, part of the one segment of the class was uh, body work and I had done a little bit before that class just tinkering my dad had an 82 uh, Ford F-150 two-wheel drive it was going to be the first vehicle uh, that I was going to be allowed to drive when I turned 16. And it, the cab corners were out of it, and the wheel arches were out of it. And uh, I don't know, I might have some pictures of that truck around, but I know I don't have any pictures of what we did to it. I have finished project, uh, finished product pictures. Um, the tailgate was messed up on it, wouldn't stay latched, and uh, was bent up a little bit. And uh, had some rust on it, um, and it had moldings on it, and we took all the trim rivets off of it, ground those off, and all we had to weld with was a 110 Lincoln uh, buzz box, and uh, we got the smallest welding rods we could get, and uh, tried to weld it up, and it just didn't work out all that good. So anybody uh, who wants to arc weld sheet metal, I advise against it. It's probably one of the hardest things I've ever tried to do, and my skill set was very low as a, as a young man. You know, I didn't have any experience in that. And we didn't have a MIG welder. MIG welder, 
weren't real popular, I, I should say, at that time. I mean, that was back in the early 90s. Um, I mean, MIG welding was a popular process for sure. But uh, as far as affordable machines for the, the home garage or whatever, they just weren't out there. Um, so we did that truck with a, a buzz box on a lot of the stuff and uh, we put wheel arch panels in it. My neighbor was a, uh, I should say my folks neighbor, was a body man for a Chrysler garage. And uh, he did stuff like a lot of the, the body guys do. They did work at home and uh, side work, you know, whatever you want to say. And uh, he had a Lenco spot welder, a newer one, newer than the one I got now. And uh, we put those wheel arch panels, overlaid them, didn't cut out the old metal. That was just, I guess that was the way he was used to doing them, you know, back in the day. And uh, he put those panels in for us and uh, we feathered it out with dirt, glass and mud and me and my buddy. Uh, Cash, who you guys have never seen before. I don't get to see him very often anymore. He's a pretty busy guy. And uh, he and I, being a couple young bucks, did all the body work on that truck and uh, got it ready to paint. And I remember my dad painting it in the garage at home. It was a midnight blue. The truck was originally uh, like a silver and a very oxidized one at that. But we painted it that midnight blue metallic with a, a Sears siphon feed gun. Probably had a 1.8 tip in it, like a Binks knockoff, like a number seven. And uh, he painted that truck up and it had dry spots on it, no runs or anything. Um, but he got it painted, we painted it inside and out. Got it all masked up and, you know, all Dad did was paint it, he kind of let us go and do what we what we thought we knew how to do and it, it turned out pretty damn good. And you know, that gave me the bug, so when I bought my first truck, I shouldn't say I bought it, my father bought it for me and I had to pay him back. I got an 85 Ford, which I wanted a Chevy, but we just couldn't find one. So I ended up with a two-wheel drive 85 Ford, straight six-cylinder engine. And uh, that's the same thing that blue truck had in it, that 82, and we'd run it for a while. We bought it used, and the thing was pretty damn tough. So Dad figured, you know, for a first truck, I shouldn't probably have a V8. I should probably have a six-cylinder, you know, for gas mileage. And that thing was a miserable prick on fuel. So that didn't really work out for that reason. But uh, that truck needed, uh, it wasn't as rusty as the other Ford, but it needed some uh, wheel arch repairs and uh, some other, you know, surface type rust. Door bottoms were crusty, but not rusted through. And that was another one. I tackled that one in the home driveway. I was probably uh, 16 to 17 at that point. Um, I got that truck shortly after I turned 16 because Dad decided that he didn't want to share his work truck with me anymore. Because I was working at the time and our schedules were just not working out together. So I worked on that. It was a short bed, 85 F-150. Yeah, I worked on that truck for oh, a good couple months throughout the summer. Um, that was another one, tailgate was screwed up on it, all that shit. I never ended up putting a tailgate back on it. But uh, I painted that one and uh, I heard some guys telling stories about, you know, their influences on learning to do body work, or mechanic work. And uh, one of my really big influences was another high school shop teacher and a uh, drafting uh, drawing teacher that I had. who was a lot like me. Uh, he, he could do pretty much anything that he set his mind to. And uh, he helped me get the patch panels welded in along with some other guys in the, in the class who, uh, whose fathers had MIG welders and had done that kind of restoration type stuff. And uh, I ended up painting that one in my folks' driveway too. And uh, my neighbor down the street, the body man, came and showed me since I was gonna be painting how to set up a paint gun and got it all set up for me and showed me kind of how to paint. Of course, I 
was part of the way into it. That truck was a color change too. So my first two paint jobs were both completes and color changes. And lots of uh, rust repair. So I did those jobs and uh, that short bed 85 Ford turned out pretty good. I drove it for about a year, year and a half. Until about the time I was a senior in high school. And I got into the landscaping business with my buddy Andy. And uh, that truck just wasn't uh, cutting it. And I was making enough money I could make a truck payment. And uh, I think my dad saw that I was a pretty responsible young man. So he helped me buy my first one, you know, bought the truck for me. And I had to make the payments on it. So I did that. And, uh, in that truck for a long time so that's how I got into uh, got into doing body work probably in the early 90s when I was just a pub and uh, once I uh, moved out of the house and got my own shop and everything I started doing small jobs you know scratch and dents I had an 84 uh, half ton Chevy four wheel drive that I started restoring and then work got really busy and kind of got in the way so I never finished that truck and I'm, I'm kind of sorry I didn't I finally got rid of that truck last summer had it for 10 years and never restored it completely but uh, I got it painted and then it needed cut and buffed and everything and I just lost interest in it it was a stick shift truck with a, with a three, three speed in it I think and uh, I ended up putting automatic trans in it. The truck didn't have AC in it, and I put AC in it and all this stuff. And I don't know, it just had so many little things that weren't supposed to be on the truck that I put on it for parts vehicles that it just wasn't fun anymore. So I kind of let that one go uh, to my neighbor out at the shop. His brother wanted it. He had a an older Chevy that was just a rot box and he needed parts off of it so I traded it for that Lenco spot welder and some other items and that worked out fine I like the barter system so that's kind of how I got into it so I'll bring you guys back after a while maybe we'll talk some more